In this video, I will introduce using MRI-Cron to navigate the brain. First, in order to get MRI-Cron, go to Google, type, type MRI-Cron, and go to this website here. And you can go to the Download Now drop-down menu and choose the version that works for your computer. I'm going to be focused on the Windows version for this tutorial video, and these instructions should be similar to that you find for the Linux or the Mac versions. You may have to look at different portions of the GUI for different values, though. Hopefully you've downloaded the materials in the description, so if not, you should do that now. But I've placed these materials on my desktop. They're the MRICon workshop materials. Within it, you'll see these different folders. I've already downloaded MRICon and put in this MRICon Windows in a folder, and so you can access the files in these folders um, for certain materials. Okay, so first I'm going to open MRICon and just go into that folder and select the icon. So the first time you open MRICon on your computer, you might be ask for permissions for it to open, uh, just say yes, and uh, after you do that once, you shouldn't have any issues opening it um, in subsequent times. So when you open it, you should notice the, the, a brain file will be loaded up. It might be different than what you see here. So whatever file I have here is based on the previous time I had MRICron open, it loaded up the um, whatever file was open when I closed it. And so if you want to see this specific brain file, you can go to File, Open Templates, and select the CH2 Better Brain. And this will load this particular brain, which is a default template brain that's used as kind of a standard for uh, navigating the brain and, and viewing the, the brain with different overlays, such as statistical maps or something to that effect. And so this is, by default, comes with MRI-Cron. In this thing, you might want to change the parameters for better viewing. So you can hover over this symbol here. If you left click, you can toggle away or toggle back this crosshair that you see here that I'm tracing. And so wherever this crosshair is, that is where the brain you would be centered on a specific voxel. Uh, the voxel is a three dimensional pixel. So if you hover over this again, you can control right click and you can change the color of these crosshairs. And uh, let's say you wanted to set it to red. You can do that. Control right click if you want to change it back to yellow. Okay. And I find yellow works well over the black background. So the uh, these Different letters refer to S and superior, so this is the very top of the brain, so if I click up on the S. P means posterior, so if I click here, it's the very back of the brain. L means left, over here, and A means anterior. Okay? So these are important to help give a sense for where you are in the brain when you click on a particular orientation. And so the orientations of these different slices have names. So this is the sagittal slice that I'm selecting right here. Okay. This is the coronal slice that I'm selecting right here. And this is the axial slice that I'm selecting right here. And notice that here as I'm moving around in this particular plane, you see that the other two orientation planes, they change. And so this is because it's a three-dimensional image. If I select all the way in the anterior portion in this axial slice, you see that the crosshair goes all the way to the front, to the anterior portion in the sagittal slice. Okay? And if I go all the way to the select by the P in the sagittal slice, it goes all the way to the back, in the posterior portion, here in the axial slice. Okay. So one thing you can do just to help get a sense for navigating the brain, you can select all the way at the top by the S. So the S is, again, the superior. 
It's also called the dorsal portion of the brain. And you can hold, select and hold the left click and just scroll down. Scroll more inferiorly. Also called ventrally. So the inferior is also called the ventral side of the brain. And so here, I hope you're noticing that in the axial orientation that the slices are changing. And so now I'm going more superiorly. And so this gives us kind of surfing through the brain in one particular orientation. Okay. We can also start at the front of the brain, so the anterior portion of the brain, and proceed posteriorly. And you can see in the coronal slice, you can see the slices changing. Now, before I go any further, I want to point out in the MRICON workshop materials folder, so within the brain navigation materials, there is a brain navigation guide, which has key terms that are important to note. And so I've already gone over all the terms here, because I didn't mention the medial and lateral. So the medial is just the middle of the brain, so the middle side. So this is the medial portion you can see in the coronal view cutting through the middle of the brain. And so here in the sagittal, you can see a mid-sagittal slice. And if I go more laterally, it's going to either and either the left or to the right. So lateral just means going out to the side. Okay. Next, it's important to understand the uh, XYZ coordinate system. So you may have noticed these numbers up here. These refer to the X, Y, Z coordinates in standard brain space. And the specific brain space we're talking about is MNI space, Montreal Neurological Institute space. And so this is a standard coordinate system used all over the world, such that if, if uh, somebody on the other side of the planet is working in MNI space and gives me a coordinate, I know exactly in what part of the brain they are looking at. So this is the X coordinate, this is the Y coordinate, and this is the Z coordinate. Okay, and so we can navigate to a specific coordinate by going to View, M and I coordinates, and we can input the X, Y, Z coordinate. And so here, if we, by default, it takes us to the 0, 0, 0 point. Okay, so here's uh, the very kind of center of this co standard coordinate system. So if we go in the x dimension, if we increase these values, you'll notice the crosshair going more to the right. If we decrease them, you'll notice them going more to the left. And so if we increase the y, we're going more anteriorly. And if we decrease, if we're going negative, in the negative direction, we're going more posteriorly. Okay. And then in the Z, if we increase the Z values, we're going more superiorly or dorsally. And then if we decrease these values, we're going more inferiorly or ventrally. So one important aspect of this coordinate system is that it is in millimeter increments. So every increment anteriorly here that I'm going in the Y dimension is in millimeter increments. And so given this, you, one could calculate in real space the size of this particular brain. You know, how, from the origin, from the center of the brain, what's the distance posteriorly you have to go to the very back of the brain? I can click all the way to the back of the brain. And so I'm going all the way to the back. So this is the very back of the brain, right? And so this is the very, very back. So you're barely seeing any, just a tiny bit here in the coronal slice. And that's a negative 106. So from the origin all the way to the back is 106 millimeters. Okay. Now, if I want to go and calculate the length of the brain, I would take the 106 and add it all, it go all the way to the very front of the brain. So the very front here. So 
I'm seeing just a little bit in this frontal slice. I'm going all the way anterior over here in the sagittal orientation. We can see that that's a positive 74. So to get the entire length of the brain, you would just add 74 to 106. And so there's 180 millimeters from between posterior and anterior for this particular brain. And again, this is only true for brains that are actually warped and converted into this standard MNI space. So keep that in mind. Brains will come in different resolutions, so not necessarily in millimeter resolution. And this can be highlighted by the other coordinate system that you may have noticed up here at the top. So you see x, y, z here. These numbers don't match what you see for the x, y, z coordinates in the MNI system. And so, but I can navigate using these toggles here. So what these are are essentially the coordinate system of the brain file itself. So not necessarily standardized. It's going to vary depending on, say, the resolution of the brain file. So the, co the MNI coordinate system is in millimeter space, but the brain file itself might be in half millimeter space. So these coordinates up here will match whatever the coordinates are for the actual brain file. Another thing I want to point out is what the intensity values mean. And so here I'm at the 0, 0, 0 uh, coordinate. And the, you can see up here the intensity value associated with this specific voxel. And it's 0. If I select a wider portion up here in the corpus callosum, so a white matter tract uh, that spans um, the two hemispheres, you can see the intensity value is up to 106. If I select, again, somewhere in, in the on the cortex, in this gray matter area where the cell bodies are, you can see that the value is a little lower, so it's down to 82. And so these intensity values really are just numbers that we're assigning an arbitrary color to. And so we're using the gray scale to assign these colors to these specific numbers. And to highlight this point is you can select the grayscale and go down to select a different color scale. And just for playing around, we can select the spectrum. And so we can see that we're now assigning different colors for the different intensity values. So now the lower values are in the green and the blue, and the higher values are up into the orange and the red. And so you can select different options for the color scales to kind of play around a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, we'll keep with the grayscale. Another thing to note with respect to the intensity values are these two values up here. So here, this is the minimum and the maximum intensity value that you're doing in this image. And so the minimum now is 45. And so if I select this and just increase it, right? So now the minimum that we're seeing is 104. And it gets rid of all the darker regions in the brain, OK? If I want to go back to the default, you can select this icon here, and then it'll reveal the image again. Another parameter that you might be interested in is the zoom parameter. And so we can navigate to, a, say, a smaller brain structure that you might be interested in. And so here, just selecting the caudate. And uh, say we want to zoom in, so you can select and see the fit, and we can zoom in times three. And now we can see this particular structure up close, so to speak. And now we can select back to um, fit in whatever window the size that you created. Okay, so we've gone over some of the parameters that are useful in MRI Cron for brain navigation.